Hello and welcome back to Melon Psychologies. I hope that you're doing really well. So today I really wanted to talk about why the covert narcissist is so dangerous. I've been meaning to film a video like this for quite some time because I feel like this is a subject that is highly topical and also um, especially with what's going on in the world out there. Um, domestic abuse talks about topic in the media at the moment coupled with the me too movement people are becoming much more aware of this pandemic caused by narcissistic abuse in our society especially with like love relationships family relationships friends colleagues you know the covert narcissist is out there the me too movement has highlighted covert sexual abuse by those in power or in controlling situations where these type of people take advantage of their prey, of people who are a little bit more vulnerable than they are. And they take great pleasure in doing this. What is not so recognized are the physical effects on the brain and the body as a result of this insidious abuse. So I've been looking at the phenomena of covert and malignant narcissism in relationships. And I've been doing this, you know, on my channel, you know, writing it on my blogs and on my website. And I've been looking at how this kind of narcissistic abuse or this covert malignant abuse infiltrates the very fabric of a person and how it alters basically their reality. It not only affects the victim or target, but other people who are taken in and believe the charm by the narcissistic person. And I guess this is what I have been aiming to do in the last few years, you know, on this channel, on my website. So with that being said, let's get into the video and basically unpack this. Okay, so because the covert narcissist is so skilled and so good at hiding their, their true fragmented self, they seldom get caught out and often appear to other, others as though they're the victims when they perform this covert abuse of theirs. They are really clever at being able to manipulate people's realities. They're really clever at gaslighting um, and controlling situations and that's why they survive in their environments that they do. They are really skilled at doing this. And what they do is they're really good at playing the victim because they want you to feel sorry for them. And if you're, if you're attuned enough, they will project really good clues in identifying that you're the narcissist in the relationship and that the narcissist, the actual narcissist, is the victim. And one word that I would use to describe them is relentless. A relentless blaming of others, skillful manipulation, which often leaves that victim or that person feeling like they're the ones that are going crazy. And it causes you to doubt yourself and doubt your own sense of reality. Again, I'm gonna say this, but who does this? Who actually does this? This is the most weirdest behavior and this is what we really need to look at here is the kind of person that would do this. The narcissist surrounds themselves with people who are less than, who they feel that they will have superiority over because this makes them feel good. They can upkeep this facade and they will separate their victims from their family, their friends, and basically that leads to isolation. And the reason why they do this is because if you are isolated, if you are away from anybody that can help you, it means that you are alone. You are alone with your thoughts, you're alone with your emotions. And remember, if you're not feeling good about yourself, you are gonna doubt who you are, which means that the narcissist is really able to better manipulate you into believing their reality. 
The covert narcissist will use their target's personal information to attack them, whereas healthy relationships allow for the vulnerability. The narcissist will use these vulnerabilities against their victim as ammunition to show no empathy for their victims as they have none. These behaviors will wear the victim down, but the skill the narcissist has in throwing just enough crumbs or plausibility to win or entrap the victim. Again, again, do you know what? This is astonishing, but again, this causes to question the kind of person that would do this. And this is the covert abuse. This is just, the thing is, if you go out there and you want to get help from others and you explain exactly what the narcissist is doing to you, you, when you really say it out loud, it doesn't, it doesn't feel like this is abuse, that this is, that this is actually happening. People would say, well, you know, people who don't understand this would just see this as trivial and probably say to you that maybe you just need to, you just need to change or you need to do something different. But what is happening here is it's, it's this abuse is very insidious and that's why it's called covert. That's why covert narcissists are so dangerous because they are so good at hiding what they are doing and they will play the victim. Others out there in society don't see it or don't believe it. And again, this makes you feel like there's something wrong with you. And you've got to remember that the behaviors of this covert narcissist are actually psychopathic and the and what happens is they waver on the verge of evident danger and covert covert danger which is how they get away with it for so long until until they don't when the victim actually finally breaks free if they're able to um i would say that that covert narcissists have a lot of psychopathic traits it's all done hidden under the radar and this is what I was saying, it causes the victim to feel like there's something wrong with them. Setting free from the narcissist is not easy. As the covert narcissist fears abandonment and they try and keep you in the loop for as long as possible. And in fact, the victim is their prey and they own it. They are predatory and they are dangerous. They feel like they own you. And this, this is all to do with the objectification of the person, you're my property, and I don't want you to leave. This is so dangerous. This is really, really dangerous. The victims who experience this abuse are often left feeling like they are a shell of their former selves and shattered at what has happened. It is like experiencing a bomb that has gone off inside of you and you are left feeling shell-shocked. I want to put this bit in here as well. This is about what happens when the narcissist fails to keep the victim. What a narcissist will tend to do is they will tend to, to move on. And the reason why they do this is because they cannot be alone. And I talk about this a lot. They cannot be alone. They have to be with somebody because being alone means that they have to face their reality. They have to face, with, face who they are. And they're not self-reflective. They're unlikely to be self-reflective and will not only not accept accountability for their actions. And this is another good clue to help identify if you're in the presence of a narcissist. That these people are power hungry, okay? They thrive on control and inflicting hurt and pain on some, somebody else. There is a way through this. There is a way of recovering from this abuse. And it does take a lot of courage. It does take a lot from yourself because the covert narcissist again it is all so under the radar it where the damage is caused is you questioning your reality questioning what you believe or what you have been led to believe and i think this kind of psychological abuse i think this is one of the hardest things to get past but it's not impossible because you can get past this it's it just takes a lot of willpower and a lot of a lot of um, emotion, emotional energy to move past this. What I want to talk about is the brains of narcissists, okay, and psychopaths. They are they are very different. They are wired very di differently, okay, than say the kind of people that we are. And thankfully, 
due to kind of the neuroscience, we have more technical evidence to study the differences in brain structure. Okay, so abuse experienced by a narcissist can cause actual damage to the brain. Victims suffer a hijacked, swollen amygdala and a shrinking of the hippocampus. I have talked about this and I'm going to link the video up here. Um, this video goes into more detail kind of talking about what happens in narcissistic abuse. But I'm gonna, what I'm going to do now is just give you like a quick kind of summary of what's happening. So the amygdala and the hippocampus are shrinked and this affects the, the short-term memory and the functionality and being able to kind of stabilize the cortisol cortisol levels within the brain cortisol is a hormone and it it's um the adrenal system becomes really fatigued because your brain is um releasing abnormal levels of cortisol within the body and the body has a really hard time trying to flush the cortisol out of your body the cortisol that you are feeling is the is the rush is the is the kind of excitement and it's the kind of lingering feeling where it kind of stays around your um solar plexus that's cortisol that's where it kind of lingers that's why it's really hard to flush it out of the system what i would say if you are someone that is experiencing high levels of cortisol i would say actually do as much movement as you can like exercising because it helps to get the blood flowing within your body it helps the body to process the cortisol drink lots of water as well it's another way of helping the body flush itself Gaslighting and mind games are often played by the narcissist and they are deliberately used as a way of control and as a way of manipulating yourselves or the victim. And this deliberate, disturbing behavior causes dissonance to the victim. And what happens when you're experiencing cognitive dissonance, this rewires your brain, okay? This rewires your brain. You will experience flashbacks, hypervigilance, um, not to mention other things, but this is like the common features that the victim suffers. And these, there are chemicals that keep the victim also bonded to the narcissist. Um, and this attachment is known as trauma bonding. And again, I talk a lot about this. I have a whole playlist about trauma bonding and I will link it up here. The reason why the, the covert narcissist is dangerous is because as the title suggests, that is experienced is covert to give you kind of an understanding okay so when we look at the word narcissist the narcissist is a diagnosis okay so when we look at the word personality disorders that is an umbrella term all right then we've got clusters the different classifications of personality disorders so you've got cluster a b and c and they vary in degrees. So within the cluster A, you've got schizophrenic, schizotypy, personality disorder, which borderlines on um, schizophrenia and personality disorder. All right, These, this is very different to cluster B. Cluster B is the removal of empathy. You've got sociopath, psychopath, and narcissist, the dark triad. Then you've got cluster C, which is more like borderline, emotionally unstable. And this is where they may have elements of empathy, but they're not able to regulate their emotions. That's why their behaviors come out as a rather odd or a little bit different to how we would behave. Um, there is varying degrees to all of this, but usually when you're diagnosed with a personality disorder, you kind of tend to stick within your clusters. So we're talking about narcissistic abuse. A narcissist will experience or will display behaviors of a psychopath or a sociopath. A sociopath will also display behaviors of a narcissist. And so it's really difficult to give it like one definite diagnosis. So under, under um, narcissism, you've got overt and covert narcissists. These are all elements to describe the different behaviors and the different personality traits that the narcissist will have. To be honest with you, I don't think that there is much different between the covert and the overt. At the end of the day, what we're talking about the difference here is in personality traits. It's really difficult because 
this is a personality disorder and everybody has different traits and elements of it. This is a really complex disorder system, okay? So the covert, the reason why the covert may be more dangerous or may be very similar to the psychopath or socio sociopath is because they share traits of that personality. Some narcissists are more psychopathic, some narcissists are more sociopathic. But with the covert narcissist, what we are talking about here is I would say that they have got more psychopathic behaviors. Covert, as the word suggests, the, the, the behavior that they, experience, that they d display is more insidious. It is under the radar. It causes the victim who is experiencing this, this behavior to malfunction, to question their reality. And that's what I really want to raise in this video is the different elements that are into play here. I mean, whether you're with a psychopath, sociopath or narcissist, the abuse that you are going to experience is going to be similar because ultimately what they're trying to do is they're trying to capture their victim. They're trying to gaslight their victim. They're trying to control them so that you so that you basically believe their reality. They don't want you to leave. They all have issues with abandonment and not being able to be themselves. So guys, I really hope that this video explains a little bit more about covert narcissism and what the dangerous effects are of this abuse. I'm not trying to say or lessen that any other abuse experience from a narcissist, a sociopath or a psychopath is not as prevalent it is it is because what they have what they all have in common is they're trying to dominate they're trying to manipulate you and control you and they lack empathy that's what they all have in common they cannot put themselves in your shoes they cannot understand you that's why most of the crimes that are committed um, dangerous crimes that are committed are all done by this cluster guys thank you so much for watching um, remember that I do have a Patreon membership for those of you who are experiencing or have just come out of a relationship or have moved further on um, from out of a relationship or family dynamics. This is what I cover in the Patreon membership. Please do see the link in the description box below. If you have a question and you don't fancy having a full therapy session with me, then please just send your answer in on the Wizio, which is in the description box below. And what I will do is I will film a video specifically for you and um, I will send the answer in a video format. Okay, this is not gonna be seen anywhere on YouTube or any other social media platforms. This is just done specifically for you. And Lastly, thank you so much for subscribing and please do share this video for anyone that you feel may need to hear it. Thank you so much for watching and I will be back in the next video. Take care. Bye-bye.